Hello, listeners. Hopefully there's a bunch of you. Thousands. Welcome to the TalkCast. I'm Matt, here with... I'm Dustin, hello. And I am Alex. Far away, far, far away, Alex. Yeah. A little closer, my son. He's, in. he's not terribly social sometimes, you'll no. have to forgive him. But he is a cutie. Uh, we are going to be doing a variety podcast where we're going to talk about all sorts of things. So if you like stuff and things and opinions and hearing those things, then you are in the right place. So uh, if you want to do a little, I guess, introduction, Matt, you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to say. Um, my life's kind of in flux right now. I have a daughter on the way, so that's that's taking up the majority of my time. Also, manage a restaurant, so that keeps me pretty busy. But I do squeeze in time for games, movies, music, entertainment, stuff like that, and that's probably the bulk of what I'll be able to bring to the table, I guess. We are at a table right now, I should add. Uh, and I'm, at that point, I'm Dustin. Hi, um, I'm 26. Uh, I'm a homeowner. <laughs> um, I manage uh, a retail thing, and uh, I have a two-year-old, and uh, I like to laugh. How about you, Alex? Well, as Dustin stated, my name's Alex. I'm 24. I am parts manager at a local power sports store, so uh, between bouncing back and forth on fullers, dirt bikes, uh, anything basically with two wheels. Uh, or horsepower, you know, whatever. But uh, basically, that fills my day between that and chilling out with friends and taking it easy, really. Excellent. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. Movies, uh, video games, music, television programs, um, all kinds of stuff. How to be a man, how to not be a man, uh, just those kinds of things. So... Um, whoever wants to get us started, we have a, some, some stuff to talk about. Anything yeah, well, you want to get off your chest, sir? We, uh, well, we, we got a little bit of The Witcher 3 in. Mm-hmm. I personally don't know anything about the series. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I, I played a little bit of the second one. No idea really about any of the backstory to characters, but it seemed pretty intriguing. I mean, there was, there was a lot of good points to it. The Absolutely. lighting is great. Oh, man. Yeah, the environments are fantastic. You're not wrong. Yeah. Lighting's beautiful. Alex, what did you think about the monster design, like, say, with the griffin? Uh, I'm definitely down with that. I mean, it's real in-depth. Um, definitely with Matt on it, though. I mean, th- there's enough structure to keep you going to where you really don't doze off if you get tired, you know. Uh, just kind of go from one mission to the other, but uh, you still have the opportunity to freelance and just go around if you want to. But uh, definitely the graphic design is spot on. It uh, should be a good game to play. I'm kind of going into it open-minded with not playing any of the games before. but uh, I'm hoping that doesn't come back to bite us at any point, <laughs> no. not knowing anything about... Sure. I'm, maybe a little bit, but I think I think you'll find a lot of people didn't play the first two games. Mm-hmm. I think the third one's really going to be where... It, it might be the one to set the franchise apart. From what I've seen of them, it seems to be a whole different thing. It is. Absolutely. I played the first two, and uh, yeah, the third one is a whole different animal. I mean... It is, it's definitely still a Witcher game, but it certainly um, borrows from other successful fantasy RPGs that, I mean, it, you know, it's got some Skyrim in there, it's got some Dragon Age, it's got a little bit of everything, uh, but it just, it, it seems to work really well. I've played several hours at this point, and it's fantastic. I can't wait to get more into it. So, if you are uh, thinking about The Witcher 3, I, I mean, I'd recommend the hell out of it. Yeah. Wait, but you will have to wade through a bunch of dialogue. There, there is, is a dialogue. skip button, uh-huh. but it uh, it's on par with Metal Gear in the amount of words you're going to have to look at on the screen. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. Um, so yeah, Witcher Three, I give it a thumbs up. Uh, yeah. Having played just a couple hours, I think uh, we're really looking forward to just playing the rest. In free uh, time, I would give it a shot. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's the Witcher. Witcher Three. Any other video games we need to talk about? Good out. Yeah, I mean, I think Alex and I. You know, we both ride something on two wheels. Uh, we're pretty excited for ride, Alex. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, super realistic motorcycle game, whether it be your dual sport or your uh, naked sport models, your European models, or uh, more of your, uh, you know, your traditional sport bikes. But uh, it's got a little bit of everything to offer. Uh, should be a really good time. It's, uh, it's neat to be able to mix it up through mountain tracks instead of just being, you know, on a circular flat track as normal. 
But uh, there's so much diversity in the game. It should be a really good time. It's also nice that we're not going through a city. Most yeah. every right. racing game now, you're this hooligan running from the law through the right. city. It'll be nice to be on the track and actually have, like, a, it'll be more like a career than, you know, just you filling your free time out on the street. Right. Let me ask you a question about these naked bikes. Are you allowed to wear pants when you're on them? Or no, shirt? completely naked. Okay. What Optional. about what about a wool vest? You wear a wool vest. Okay. Those are allowed. Just a vest. Adds to the drag, but... Right. It, uh, keep Wait, can I wear drag while I'm... <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that allowed? Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing that's really cool, though, um, I know everyone's played probably Gran Turismo, and it has some simil- similar characteristics to it, like... You know, you can turn on an ideal line that tells you when to brake, when to accelerate, um, how to get around the track in the most efficient way. But what's different is the handling characteristics of a bike. You can't just mash on the brakes or lean too far or too sharp into a turn because the back wheel will come out from under you. You'll lay it over. So you you have to be you're more prone to wrecking and in a game about racing that can really cost you. Does ride have uh, like ragdoll? I didn't know this honestly when I was when I wrecked I was in too big of a hurry to get back on the bike. Right. So it, does it just spawn you back on the bike or does you does your dude run back to the bike? It doesn't like, run back. Oh, I'm thinking yeah. uh, road, road rash. rash yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I anticipated that. Yeah. There are. Uh, I mean, the wrecks are really realistic though. So I mean, if I was in front of Matt or something per se on a race, uh, if I fall, you know, my bike hits Matt. Matt falls. I mean, it's yeah. it's not just a, a glitch where you jump the other bike at you know 140 mile an hour. Is so. there damage to the vehicles? Oh, I didn't notice that. Not, at, not, the, not at this point in the demo. I'm not sure what the full game will have right. in terms of that, but you would hope they would do something because if you goof up the aerodynamics of a bike, that would definitely affect the handling, I would think. Absolutely. Alex, you'd know more about yeah, that. Yeah, I feel like we're just on a rookie mode, though. I don't yeah, think that's true, too. The, now, is there a Wookiee mode? Wookiee mode. Every corner you hear a... <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Go on. But that should be a fun game. I'm excited. comes out next month. Uh, for PlayStation 4 and a few other console systems, I believe. This but, segment uh, brought to you by Ride. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully they'll they'll send us something our way because, yeah, you know, please. they're going to hear this. We like your game. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about – a lot of people I've, – I've heard this as a rumor, but I, I would love it to be true. We were just talking about Call of Duty 4 and how it's like a magical game. And there really hasn't been anything quite to match it. No. Um, some of the other ones have been great. Like I love World at War for different reasons. I love Black Ops One. Um, so there are several that I, I really do enjoy. But Call of Duty Four is the best and ultimate Call of Duty game in my opinion. It had its own feel. Yeah, absolutely. Something else felt like it. We played hundreds of hours of that multiplayer, weeks yes. and weeks worth of time, at least for me, in the oh, multiplayer. Yeah. And then and then that doesn't even count the local multiplayer we did. Every yeah. single week we'd have people come over and play it. The maps are the best. The guns, it's perfectly balanced. It, it couldn't is. get better, really. But um, we were just talking about maybe it would be neato if we could get some sort of HD collection for the PlayStation 4 and for PC. Maybe, you know, get some higher resolution graphics in there. But uh, maybe we get Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3 all together in one package. And then maybe uh, World at War and then Black Ops 1 and 2 together in a package. Like remastered with all the it would multiplayer. Make a lot of sense. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, that company is about the money. Why don't we skip a year? Like instead of giving us Black Ops Three, they could have just given us one of those packages, and people would have been just as happy, if not happier. Way more redefined, I, though. Yeah. That been sweet. And it would have given them time to actually do something to impress us with, you know, Black Ops Three. Sure. Now, I will admit that I liked Advanced Warfare a lot. That it's been the best one in a long. It's time. It's crazy how good it is. I just don't know if Black Ops 3 will be different enough. It's cool that it has this, uh, from what we've heard, uh, we're recording this in, what is it, May of 2015. So uh, we obviously don't know that much about Black Ops 3 yet. So, you know, we uh, we don't know that much about like what the zombies are going to be. We've heard there will be a zombies campaign. Um, but, you know, other than that, it's not going to be that different. Yeah, if you, I feel like at this point, they're just hanging their hat on the fact that they have zombies in yeah, that. Maybe so. And they want you to buy it just based on that. But they also do seem pretty confident. They've shown more at a much earlier time than they've ever shown. Yeah. So we'll see. They, they do seem pretty confident. Treyarch is a studio that's used to making a game every two years. Yeah. Give them an extra year, 
who knows, man? I, I mean, I bet the gameplay will be good. Regardless, yeah. I bet the gameplay will be good. Maybe the story won't be amazing. Maybe we won't care about the setting. But I bet the gameplay will be I mean, honestly, fun. who really puts that much time into the single player of a Call of Duty game? I mean, well, I usually play through once, twice. Yeah, but, but I mean, they, they do put a lot of work into them. I mean, just for example, um, Advanced Warfare, like this, it's clearly been handcrafted and like really well made, you know. like That's true. Pretty well made. Well, we'll see. They always tend to have a good single player, but kind of yeah. forgettable now yeah. because they keep doing one every single year. Mm-hmm. And and there's a Duke Assassin's Creed coming out. I don't care. I, no one. I, does anyone I can't, here care? It's it. kind of like the yeah. Land Before Time. There's so many you can't keep track of. Oh, anymore. That's such a weird thing to compare it to. Yeah, it's, it's the only thing I could compare it to, though. <laughs> I, think yeah. instead of, I think instead of producing more, they should go back and, like we said, redefine. Yeah, and everything, and, and bring it back. I mean, take a year or two is, off. Look how way better yeah. that is. Oh you know, my! Grand Theft Auto is the everything. best example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did not just make another. Yep. Because they did three, uh, Vice City, San Andreas, all kind of similar. I mean, they they did get better, I would say for sure. Mm-hmm. But they're all kind of similar. They took the time, and four was four was better. But then like five just knocks it out of the and, park. And it's the same concept. They stayed true to the core of the game, yeah. but there's so much different about it. Yeah. Than the others, they couldn't have done better with well, the, GTA Five. The funny part is, I mean, I, I'm playing this game for the first time, and it's funny to talk to my cousins who have played on it, you know, on the previous console, and they're like, "Oh yeah, this this part's tough. I beat this," and it's just like, "Well, it a, you played it when it's a whole different schematic," and they're still intrigued by the new system, yet you know it, it still sticks to that core value like you guys talk about. Definitely makes for a neat experience. Absolutely, we loved our GTA here. We've been done a lot of the heists and oh, the had a good time with that. Yeah, the heists are fantastic. That, that added such a great element to it yeah. because I feel like that—that's one of the most exciting aspects of any kind of crime is when it's organized and well yeah. orchestrated, and you feel like something's at stake. Absolutely, and it is. If you have to pay out all that money to get it going, so yeah. whoever started the heist, yeah, you, got, you better finish that. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Okay, cool. Um, oh, one more thing. Um, the Android game, Future Fight. Um, if we do, if we're able to do more of these, uh, you'll find out that we are pretty big Marvel fans. Um, and uh, there's the there's this Android game. It's also on iOS um, called Future Fight. It is a well, it's comparable to Marvel Ultimate Alliance, I would say. Yeah. Um, it is a free-to-play Android slash iOS game that um, has elements of like a, like Ultimate Alliance, like beat 'em up style, and um, some RPG elements too. Your characters level up. You're creating a team. Um, There's actually a fair bit going on with adding to your character. You know, you can put different crystals on to yeah. get um, you know better critical hit ratios or just more physical damage, sure. more defense. Um, there's, and then skills, and just like Ultimate Alliance, you can get better moves as you level up. Sure. Um, so they, they did a pretty good job. I'm, I'm surprised that it's... As good as it is? Yeah. No, every time I start it up, I'm like, I'm amazed that we're playing this on our phones. Yes. It is amazing. We've come a long, long way. Yeah. And I just even, I, mean, I don't know, not too long ago, I, I would have said, eh, phone games, you know, maybe a little oh. here and there, a, a little something, something... You know, just like words with friends or something. Yeah, you know, never anything that's too taxing because no, just touchscreen gaming doesn't really appeal to me. But usually. for some reason, this game works. Yeah, it plays. I don't know, a little like a dungeon crawler, I guess. Um, your 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 main move, you can you just hold the button and he does it as you know as many times as you can do it. And uh, like you have these power moves that have like a longer cooldown. Uh, it's a lot like something like Diablo or like I said, Ultimate Alliance or something like that. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and we're, like, super addicted right now. Um, we, there are some multiplayer aspects to it. Um, not like... You, you can't play together, but, like, for example, if Matt has a character that I would like to use, the game sometimes would give me the option to pull his... For example, he has the vision, and I don't. Um, I can pull his vision into my game and uh, summon him and uh, do more damage to the enemies because I have access to him. And I actually gain points from that. Yeah, he gets points for it, uh, and I obviously help could help winning the level. Yeah. So that is that is awesome. I don't know about you, but I always save mine for the boss. boss absolutely. You got to. Yep. Yeah, there's no point if you use it beforehand. You forget it. You got to save him for the boss. Um, one thing that I really enjoy about it is is the uh, team building, you know, you you get 
you unlock characters as you go through collecting so many biometrics, or sometimes you just flat out get the characters. That's true. Yeah. Um, but it really, it, you have to earn them by putting time into the game, which is kind of nice because you get rewarded for actually being there. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes the game like pulls you in. It's like, hey, you got ten thousand free coins. Yeah, it, I mean, it is a free to play game. To play. You could put money into it if you wanted to. I have yet to do that. Um, yeah, I don't feel that there's a need. You don't, don't have to. No. The game's the game's pretty well balanced as far as whether or not you need to actually pay money into it. And I, you know, I feel like you could have plenty of fun without putting a cent into it. I think so. It makes it more rewarding. You yep. know, when you work a little harder to get something, I feel That's like. That's true. And if I started buying stuff, I think the, I think it would lose some of its yeah. charm. Well, or um, it goes back to Grand Theft Auto Online. I had a, a gift card for GameStop, and I bought one of the shark cards. Right. So it was, it was money. It was like free money online. That sure. I didn't earn. You just blew it? And I just blew it. And didn't, like, the getting, the things I got out of it. Just it, they didn't have the same appeal because That's I right. didn't have to earn them. It's like throwaway you know? money. Yeah, it was like, oh well, I got matter. that, but it doesn't matter because it didn't really cost me anything. <laughs> you know? I know what you mean. So I, I feel like it's it's always better to earn something like that in game. I've never bought anything like pay to win. I'm not that I'm no not point. that kind of gamer. No. I'd rather just put in the time. If I don't get it, I don't get it. You know. That reminds that makes me think like remember when we had cheat codes? Yeah. Like oh. that was a real thing. Yes. Like, you really wanted to get the cheat codes and, like, put them in. But now, like, if someone asks me about cheat codes, I kind of go, uh, why do you want cheat codes? Yeah. You know, I, the only time I really feel like cheat codes are okay are, like, if um, if they're going to enhance your game. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes there are some funny cheats, cheats where they're, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, something like super strength or, like, a mode you couldn't get just regular. Like, once you beat the game, if you want to screw around and break the game, Absolutely. be my guest. You know, whatever the whatever the, the code may be. At least play it the way they meant it to be played. Yeah, at least one time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If you actually enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. Definitely. That is a weird thing, though. We used to be... I mean, there used to be cheat books you could buy. Um, well, it was, it was a whole different era of gaming. Yeah. I mean... And there was the internet, but, like, I don't know. But, honestly, I feel like games back then weren't so easy to get through, either. No, they weren't. It doesn't they, seem like it, but maybe we just suck. It's really been made a lot easier. Well, also, but they've also not. Well, it, they, want it, it you to, they want you to succeed at gaming now. Right. Well, some sometimes, yeah. Right. But then there's games like Dark Souls where it's like, we dare you to try and beat this game. Right. No way. I, I can't speak on that. I haven't played it, personally. I've um, just seen a few things here and there for it. It's super hard, super hard core. It? It's it, it the game basically mess, it trolls you on purpose, and okay. uh, you know um, it's amazing if you can beat it. In my opinion, I'm, I've never beat it, and uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Just the simplicity, though, of old games like say Mario, that can be a very difficult game. Sure. You know, for being a two D platformer, right? And now you have so much more, so many more elements to a game. But the game itself is easier, and you can breeze through it. Right. Mm-hmm. It just seems like there, we've lost some of the I, I know difficulty of gaming. Yep. Mario is a fun campfire type game, though, where you can all sit around, play it, watch it, have fun. That's and, true. And uh, just pass the controller around, you know. That's true. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so we watched together just recently uh, the Supergirl trailer. That was so bad. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking. And I'm I'm not against it because what they're trying to do. I think I understand what they're trying to yeah. say with that. But just the quality seems lacking. The writing from the trailer. I mean, granted, this is just the trailer. Um, maybe it's brilliant writing. I don't know. But it just doesn't seem that well done. It's like... Well, it seems like a lot of stereotypes just one after another. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty bad. And well, and like after the quality of shows like... Like you like Arrow a lot, and Gotham and stuff, and, and, and the Flash, Flash, and and well, and I've been watching a lot of Daredevil. Daredevil is mm-hmm. fantastic. That show is so oh good. Goodness. Like, oh, it's sad to see something looking as right. bad as Supergirl. And it feels like they just threw in Supergirl, like that aspect of it, to get viewers. But yeah. At its at its. It heart, could be some other show. Yeah, at its heart, it's, it's more rough. of just like a goofy comedy. A girl comes to the city. Yeah. 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 Because I don't feel like that's how. Like, if I created Supergirl, I wouldn't want her to be 
portrayed quite way. the way she is yeah. in the trailer. I would want her to be a little more of like a strong person, you know, not so goofy ditzy. She's super ditzy. Yeah, yeah. still yeah. still down to earth, but just not so. Yeah. Is that a Krypton joke? No, no, let me. Could be. All right. How dare you? My <laughs> planet exploded. Also, How dare you? <laughs> what What really confused me about it is it shows. Um, she's Superman, older. She's older than Kal-El. But is she really? She, I don't. I don't. I don't remember about the comics. It seems like it, it, early when it shows them being launched to Earth. She's older than him. That's what I mean. But then once the show, like the time frame the show's taking place. It seems like she's younger. Would Superman have been Superman by that point? Yeah. According to the most recent movie, no. Okay. I wouldn't think so. Have you seen Superman Returns? I have. I liked it. Well, you liked it? I did. I liked it too. I was really surprised because I was like, oh great, another origin story. Right. But they did it a little different and I appreciated it. Yeah, they went full sci-fi almost. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Russell Crowe was great. Um, and Henry Cavill is great as Superman, and, and even Lois job. Lane, uh, she's she's great. Uh, yeah. What's her name? No idea. I forget her name. Honestly, uh, Enchanted, whatever her name is. Amy Adams, she's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. she's yeah. fantastic. She's good. Um, now, what, did you see Superman Returns? Two thousand six Superman Returns. Two thousand six. Mm. I don't think I did. Oh either. wait, I did. I know I did. With Brandon, Brandon, yeah, is Brandon it Ruth? Ruth, Ruth. Okay, I don't know if it's how it's pronounced, Ralph. R O U T H. I don't know how that's pronounced. But I think it's Ralph. Ralph. Ruth. Ralph. <laughs> Ralph. I think Ruth is Babe be, Ruth. It can't R-U. be Roth. Why wouldn't it? That'd be R O T H. It'd be like Eli Roth. R O T H. Yeah, I don't know. Anyhow. Ruth. <laughs> Ruth. Um that what do you think of that movie? I didn't I didn't I didn't enjoy it. Didn't enjoy it? Yeah. Okay. I will defend it a little bit. Because it is very much in the style of the original Superman movies. I agree with that. Superman. <laughs> it's very much like those original movies. It's very bright colors and like, uh, I don't know, kind of silly at times. Uh, but at the same time, still still kind of Superman. It's the Superman I grew up with. So I, I get it. I'm, I'm happy with that one. But I think Superman, uh, Superman, what is it, Man of Steel? Yeah. Yeah, that movie. Uh, Far pretty beyond. Great. Pretty great. Any... The best Superman movie there's been. Got it. Well, I don't know. I love the original one very much. Take out the nostalgia factor. Take out the nostalgia. Yeah. Well, it's a different Superman. Yeah. It's a very different Superman. So it's really I mean, di- he does kill Zod. Whoa, whoa. Spoiler alert. <laughs> if you haven't seen it by now, hey, guys, you deserve it to be spoiled. Spoiler, I'm sorry. Right um, I mean, geez, it's been a while. What year did that come out? 2012? I'm not sure, but... 2013? It's been long enough that I don't know the year. It's been a while. Uh, anyway. <laughs> kind of got off topic of Supergirl there. But, no, uh, but yeah, we, we've tackled Supergirl, I think. I, yeah, I just... Uh, not looking great. I feel let down. We'll see what happens. Maybe it's not geared towards us. Maybe it's we should be let down. It's not a show for us. Yeah, we should um, <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Um, you're not... I, you might be right. Maybe that's it. Um, another movie slash film thing. Movie slash film. TV, whatever. Um, I'm a huge James Bond fan. And did you see the most recent trailer for Spectre? I have not. Oh, my God. At least I may not have. Oh, been. my God. It looks really, really good. Uh, it's, like, super dark, and the music is really, like, foreboding. And it's got Christoph Waltz as the main villain. Do you know who Christoph Waltz is? I don't. Yeah, you At do. least not by name. You will when I describe I him. Inglorious Bastards. Okay. The German guy that drinks the milk at the beginning. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah creepy so. as hell. Yes, he is. He's the Bond villain in this movie. Well, uh, fitting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the movie looks fantastic. I'm a huge Bond fan. Um, so I just I thought Bond would be a good thing for us to talk about since I feel like it'll come up a lot on future episodes if we well, if we get a chance to do more of these. And I think that we're all different levels of Bond fan. Bond fan. Yeah. I yep. feel like Alex being. The most casual Bond viewer of us? Probably. Well, okay, uh, Alex, so. let, let me go through. You like Bond. Who's your favorite Bond actor? Uh, the newest one. James Daniel Craig. Craig. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. What's your favorite James Bond video game? Uh, Goldeneye, though. So Goldeneye? It, it's like complete opposite of each other. I mean, like, film-wise, I like the newest actor uh, we just discussed. And then game-wise, I mean, the original Goldeneye, I mean, by far. I'd, and I don't know if that's because the video game we first, like, started playing that was a shooter that was a you know james bond base 
and it has some sort of sentimental value. But, uh, I mean, it's just a good game. I mean, there's so many different aspects of it. It was straightforward. It's just At the time, there wasn't a shooter. lot of other... No, no, right. there wasn't. For was consoles, no. Yeah. There were plenty of shooters on PC, but for yeah. consoles, good shooters, you, yeah. you, know, you couldn't and really... Let's face it, when we were kids, having a computer that would play the top-of-the-line games, it, was, it wasn't as common. Yeah, we got along. So, if you were lucky to have a console, so that was yeah, that was 64. the majority yeah. of the of the gaming experience yeah, for a absolutely. while. Not to mention, you'd play the game, and depending on if you play multiplayer or campaign, everybody that's played the game knows that you have that siren when you're alerted, get stuck in your head for like hours after playing the game. You, know, I, just, you know what? Wah, yeah, and wah, I love the music the too time. for that game. I do love the music. It's, oh, yeah. it's very. Um, I think you mean unique. the score. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so let me ask you, Matt. Which who's your favorite James Bond? First of all, you know it's it's Daniel Craig. Um, not just because he's new and flashy. Um, I he just is flashy. I just really buy. I mean, he's not really. He's kind of no. He's kind of well. I, I buy, Bond is a little flashy. I buy by into nature. the way they sell him to us. He's not so suave, you know. He's but he suave. he is arrogant. I think the arrogance helps yeah, with true. coming off more suave than he is. But it doesn't but, always work for but him. But in the field, he's not, you know, <laughs> he doesn't turn his underpants into a submarine. He just swims through the water. You know, right. he, he kind of bulldozes his way through some things. I I like that quality to him. He's a human he's, weapon. He's sometimes yeah. a little more blunt and sometimes he's, you know, more of a scalpel. So you get sure. more elements to one character out of Daniel Craig plus he just does such a great job. I mean, sure. No, he's believable as hell. Yeah. Oh, he gets into it. Yeah. I will have to agree with you. I think Daniel Craig probably would be my favorite Bond. I'm, I'm most, surprised at least you're the conceding most, that. At least the most believable Bond. No, I yeah. totally agree. He's the most believable. I really thought you would have gone with uh, Connery. Connery, um, or the the, the middle Moore. guy, Roger Moore. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what though? I recently went through and watched every single Bond over the last couple months, um, and I, they all have merits. They all have reasons to love them. Um, but you know what's weird? I used to love um, the uh, Pierce Brosnan Bond. Yeah, uh-huh. I remember those after, days. After watching it now, he's no, he's the last. Yes. I like I like uh, I like um, oh, what's his name? The one from Under Her Majesty's Secret Service. He played Bond one time. I like him better than than Pierce Brosnan. He's, uh, he would be last on my list. That yeah, he's, ruined, he's he last. ruined James Bond a lot for me. Wow! I yeah. think had I seen the older films, I would have been into it. Sure. But what started me off on James Bond was Goldeneye and yeah. uh, World's Not Enough. Yeah, and, yeah, they're they're not great movies. No. I think part of the problem is, I think maybe Brosnan's Bond would have worked in some of like the Roger Moore movies, the more silly ones. Right, but his movies are just bad. It's maybe not his fault. I, I think Pierce Brosnan is a good actor. Uh, yeah. Let me say that. I think he could. He's he could fine. have done it differently. If yeah, they'd have taken a different direction. If the script was film. different. I think it'd be a different movie. But yeah, well, of course it would. But you know what I mean. So I don't know. Um, I, I I gotta say Daniel Craig number one for me right now. I also, I mean, I love them all for different reasons. Um, I could probably put them in an order, but it's hard to say who my favorite one is. Now, uh, so. one thing that. I, I we've discussed it. It's not going to happen, but there was rumors of it. Idris Elba playing Bond. Um, yeah. Alex, do you know who Idris Elba is? Mm-mm. He you you would know him. I'm sure, I know his you, face. Yeah, I you've seen not. him in films um, and TV shows. Um, he plays in Thor. He's okay. like he's the, the gatekeeper. He's the guardian of the uh, the bridge. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good. That would be a good one. He's I awesome. He's super. He's like. Have you seen the show Luther? Mm-hmm. He's that's him. He's Luther. Okay, that makes sense. I know you're yeah. talking about that. They've discussed him being Bond, and that would be fantastic yeah. in my book. I want to see. It'd be cool if they could do. I mean, and it's not realistic, but I mean, if they could do the same James Bond that is the most current one, all the actors within the same era, just just to see if time period and graphics and elements and who's stuff like that. Yeah, who's the best? Just break it down to actor because it's kind of so tough. So put all because, the different actors in one movie. Like, yeah. Make them be in the but same But make movie. it all current because sometimes right. I feel like the the graphics and the and the stuff takes care of that. But yeah. uh, it's not so cheesy and that's I think sometimes that reflects on the actor as well. But sure. it would be neat to have like a, a actor duel where they're be all the same that. age. Like the, that would be cool. I think Alex and, brought up a really good point too with modern movies. Mm-hmm. Um, they seem to lack a lot because they feel like they can make up for it with effects. Effects, yeah. It's mm-hmm. they can draw you in just because all oh, these effects are so great when the rest of the movie is really lacking. Um, sure. That's one thing I've noticed with TV sitcoms as well. 
Um, there's some good ones out there still. Don't get me wrong, but sitcom I, wise, what do you watch? What do you like? Uh, you know, just I, I'll I'll watch a little bit of everything. One thing I one I really like is um, the New Girl. I, yeah. I know that's hilarious. It, I think it's funny. I mean, would that count as a sitcom? Hang on, We're opening a I, Sodi. <laughs> I think, I think it counts um, as a sitcom. Yeah. I guess everyone's idea of a sitcom is different. But I've not just, watched The New Girl. What's the premise? Um, it's just a goofy cast, um, a girl living in a loft. It's Zoe Deschanel. Deschanel now, wait. Is she the B in Apartment 23? No. No. No, that is her friend, though. Damn. Wait, are the shows actually related? No. No. No, no, no. Oh. Two, se- two separate. Yeah. Two okay. Separate I just was being funny, but it would be cool no. if they were like, in the no, same she's, universe. She's... Uh, she lives in a loft with a bunch of guys who are all roommates and, like, old friends. Pretend to be gay so Don Knotts doesn't kick them out? None of them are gay. Same same show, right? <laughs> um, Jake Johnson's in it. I think he's hilarious. Everything I've seen him in, which is not much. Okay. Um, but he was in a time-traveling movie, I think Safety Not Guaranteed. I haven't seen the movie, but I've heard it's great. It, it's really good. Him and Mark Duplass and yeah. um, a few other people. I think the kid from the AT&T commercials is in it. The the strange kind of weird, he's oh is he's that SNL? Uh, oh no, then I have no idea. Yeah. He's he's in it, but anyway, oh, you met Kyle Mooney from SNL. I, I just feel like a lot of TV shows don't stack up to ones from say the nineties when we grew up. Like Saved by the Bell. Not so much that, but even just like Sister Sister Tool Time. Hang with Mr. Cooper. I don't remember Wait, that show at all. Have you watched Tool Time recently? <laughs> I do. I've seen it. It's I, not great. I still, I it still is, enjoy it. It's it is not like great. It used to be when you were younger, you just thought everything. I mean, not everything holds hilarious. up. I'm sure, but I don't know. I feel like it's the Benford holds like up. Like some of the goofy moments aren't there anymore. Everything, everyone's trying to be too cool and edgy nowadays. So? Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. I just don't like modern culture as much. I don't know. Okay, I'm fine with I that. Can see that. Yeah. Uh. So, did you ever say your favorite Bond video game? Favorite Bond video game? Um, I mean, the one I, I enjoyed the most was, was I would say, GoldenEye still. GoldenEye. Um, but they really did a good job with some of the newer ones. They did. Um, I'm not sure the name, but it, it tied in with the movie. I think it was the Quantum of Solace game. Sure. Mm-hmm. They did a good job. It was sure. a first-person game. Treyarch game. Third yeah. Third person cover. I mean, yeah, they were they did a good it was, job. It was in depth. I remember, and that was the first time the graphics actually started to stand out, like you know, from a visual aspect. It really looked like Daniel Craig on the screen, yeah, for the first time. Yeah, yeah that's true. They did one called 007 James Bond Legends, yeah. and they put Daniel. This is a neat idea, kind of like what you were saying. They put Daniel Craig, um, his likeness in a lot of the old school movies. Yeah. So like they put Daniel Craig in, in Goldeneye, Gold, Goldeneye, Goldfinger, yeah. um, anything with gold in the title. I played a little bit of that. That game's not bad. No, it was they good. put him in some of the other games, and uh, it's kind of neat the way that works out. Um, so you, yeah, and it's cool because you get to hear Daniel Craig like say some of those old lines, like mm-hmm. like Gold Gold uh, Goldfinger's like oh whatever he says, and he's like oh you expect me to talk, and Goldfinger's like oh I expect you to die. It's pretty awesome. So. I think I think the is it the Quantum of Solstice was that the time? Quantum of Solace. Solace, yeah, that was one of the first games that had a racy like cutscene in it. What? Where she was changing behind That's the not true. three. Well, maybe no, one no, of no. the first ones you encountered. Maybe the first one. Or you the played. first Bond game. The maybe. first Bond game that had it. You know what I mean? And then after that, they well, just that that of definitely captures it. the Bond. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean that's what he's so, about. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have Bond the without women. Guns bold, so. uh, that's right. That's right. So. There we go. We covered a little bit of Bond. I got plenty more to say about James Bond, but I'm sure we'll sure we'll talk about it in the future. Um, and as we learn more about Spectre, I'm sure we'll be talking about that a lot more. Um, okay, so one, one thing that that kind of stuck out to me is we we touched on the new girl. I know you haven't seen it. Um, there's a character called Schmidt, Schmidt. and my my <laughs> wife and I are watching this show, and he's he's you know he's a really good guy, but he's a pretty accurate. Um, portrayal of like the modern man not not in the town we live in we're, we live in a rather small town non-modern town yeah uh, we're stuck in the past a little bit um but i think in the big city a lot of guys would or you know in a more urban environment would be like him and if that's the case men are weenies like the the majority of the population might be kind weenies? of weenies yeah just he he's trying to break into a closed donation box like for goodwill and just Why? watching, he he put in a box of belongings that were his ex girlfriend's, and he's trying to get over her. 
But he but realizes he can't, he can't part with it, so he yes. wants it back. So he wants it back. What a weenie! And uh, yeah, I mean, just that alone, not being able to move on. But he just he he looks so sad trying to open this up that I can't I can't believe that someone would have that hard of a time <laughs> throwing a cinder block at something. Or... That reminds me, real quick. This is the weirdest thing. I just want to have this recorded somewhere. I was at the other night. I had to work very late, and I I went to Burger King after work to pick up some food to bring home, and uh, in the they have like this donation box, uh, which is what it reminded yeah, me. Yeah, attached to the attached window. to the window. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, and there's you can see it. It's clear, so you can see the dollars and coins and stuff. And there was this giant <laughs> this giant beetle in there. And I just thought of the person taking the money out, like getting horrified. There's a giant beetle in there. I just thought it was hilarious. It was like just. And they're like walking around, like having a good time. Well, at any rate, I urge any man who would say they're a Schmidt type fellow to maybe listen to or read The Art of Manliness. The Art of Manliness. Um, a little shout out to them. That's a podcast, right? And a podcast and a website. Cool. The Not, not every article is going to, you know, be relevant exactly. to every right. every person. But you'll find something on there that is something maybe you haven't thought of or something you should do, you know, like something like things to keep in your car, you know, like a blanket, uh, you know, jumper cables, jumper pockets. cables. Yeah, That's huge uh, or snacks. Yeah, Hot pockets. if you get stranded on the side of the road, anything. I mean, there's there's a lot of articles just to make you maybe more prepared for everyday life um, or just take better care of yourself, your family your relationships, job, anything like that. Because it was, it was kind of shocking to me like when I realized that that's probably the modern man, like how we're portrayed or how we are. Right. So Not as powerful. Well, yeah, a little, uh, a little less handy. Would I'm you a say that handy guy. You are a handy guy. You've helped me with my house. I've mm-hmm. seen you do great things to your house mm-hmm. and other houses. I just feel like if you can do a little, learn a few skills like that, that it, it's just going to carry you further in life because you'll be able to save some money, you know, doing things yourself. And the 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 way you feel after accomplishing something with your hands, sure. you know, is is pretty great. Very Not to rewarding. mention chicks dig it. So sure. any single guy out there, if you can learn a skill and impress a lady with it, you may not be single long. So get good with your hands because ladies love handiwork. <laughs> um, I, okay, fine. Um, make me feel terrible about myself. Not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> diversity. Diversity. <laughs> That's all. We'll just stick with that. <laughs> I think the next thing we need to talk about is a feature we're going to try to regularly have. Earlier we were talking about uh, this thing we're going to do called a fantasy fight. Now this is a a real person, a fictional character, um, any 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 character or person from history ever or living or dead. It doesn't matter. And it's going to be basically a fight between two of those people. And I was trying to, we were trying to come up with two people, you know, to, to have fight that would be interesting. And the first thing that was thrown out was Freddy Krueger versus somebody. And we're like, Oh yeah, Freddy Krueger, that'd be great. And then, and then Matt says, what did you say? You said Dwight Schrute. Right. You're trying to give an example. Yeah. You're like, you, you're like, well, maybe it could be like Dwight Schrute versus, and then Alex goes like Mr. Bean. <laughs> yes. And then we just both kind of pause and we're like, oh my god, Dwight like fight. that's the best super fight ever. Yeah. Like it's really terrible that we need to start with one that good. <laughs> like that's that's genius. It is. Um... Dwight Schrute versus Mr. Bean. So Alex, I want you to start. What, who wins in this fight? Tell me how it goes down. Dwight Schrute versus Mr. Bean. What are your thoughts? Uh, man, I as as quirky as both of them are, I see it. I see it as both being like a standoff, and for some reason, um, I feel like they both just keep giving each other antagonizing gestures. Like neither one of them make the first move, but they just provoke it with like bodily gestures and just facial expressions. But uh, I don't know. Like, I feel like Dwight Schrute, believe it or not, like has more of a martial arts background to him. You know, <laughs> whether, whether it be actually beneficial or realistic or anything like that. Like, I, I see him whipping out some crazy stuff. But for some reason, he's got nunchucks in his pocket. Like, from from watching the office, no, he would such, have like, it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mr. Bean has finger pistols. Yeah, exactly. You know, and 
And uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I think Mr. Bean would give him a run for his money. Um, I don't think he's... I think a rat he's, race? Yeah, I think he's still a tough cookie. Exactly. But I, I think that... Uh, I think Dwight would just, uh, I think he'd barely come ahead, and I think that, man, once he won, he would make a display of it, whether it be, you know, waving the shrewd potato farm or, or whatever. Whoa, it's potato beef farm. farm. Potato, beef farm, yeah, <laughs> beef having farm. the beef farm flag flying around or, or something. I mean, I'd, he'd definitely make a scene of it when it's all said and done. I think, but I think there's one way that the fight would start. <laughs> yeah. well, how's that? Mr. Bean would be poking around at shrewd farms, and, and <laughs> Dwight, Dwight would be offended by it. You know, he would think he's... Some health inspector, a spy or, or, health inspector or, yeah. or spying for a rival beet farm. <laughs> Finger in the um, beets, just and then that, um... he would, Dwight would be his usual self. Well, well, who are you? What are you doing? And Mr. Bean would be like, you know, well, I'm Mr. Bean. And then flip a beet into his mouth <laughs> and just be like, you know, Dwight would be like, beets what are, are you doing? Beets are mistake, I imagine. Yeah, and he would be. And Dwight would be like, what are you doing with my beets? And he, Bean would look at him and just go, Magic. Magic? <laughs> Wait, that doesn't make sense. Well, because he flipped the... I know, I get it. And uh, that would set Dwight that? off. Well, but maybe Dwight would be amazed that he was able to do that. He's like, how, how did you do that? And uh, the combat would be pretty non-eventful. And I think they would just both tire out and and give up. I don't I don't know that anyone wins or loses in that fight. And it would be a continual thing. Like, Forever? it would never end, yeah. There okay. would just be a constant feud because no one... So, it'd be like Dwight versus... Uh, versus... Uh, Jim. Jim, yeah. yeah. Except, you know, a little... A little less pranky, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, think there'd be any death-defying blow that would just be like, <laughs> wow, he's the dominant... Mr. You know, Bean has been known to bust out some crazy moves that <laughs> you, don't, so. you don't know that he can do. And I've seen him swallow goldfish in numerous movies, like, <laughs> that alone shows some, <laughs> some instinct, I, you know. My thoughts are, I think we, we get this fight that rages on for a long time, hours and hours, maybe days... But by the end, they realize that they are the best team up ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, ever. I Imagine, Mr. Bean. They <laughs> go on to be like, like they're 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 the they're the Batman and Batman counter espionage, dude. They're they're Batman and Batman. There's no Robin oh, involved. Yeah. That, I think uh, Mr. Bean and Dwight Schrute would be the best team up of all time. So this fantasy fight, um, two out of three say it would be Dwight Schrute. Uh, no, no, I think no, I a, say it's a draw. I don't think anyone yeah. would win or lose. Oh, okay. So you think Dwight Drew would win? Yeah, and they, and they may not even make contact. No, 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 you're they changing may, mind. No, 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 no. But they could air fight. Yeah, they, look at each other. It's it could air be fight. an exhausting air fight where nobody ever makes no, contact. Well, we need an actual answer. Who would win? I think if actual conflict occurred, it would be it it'd probably be Dwight. But I like Mr. Bean more. I'm just so. Who do you think to win? Probably Dwight. Okay. He, he's if if uh, came down to it. I, I think Dwight would. Be, Why would it come down to it? Dwight would be more ruthless. I think. I think he's got the killer instinct. You think so? I think so. He's, you know, he's raised on a farm. He's seen death. I mean, he's a savage. He's I mean, a savage. Even if it's just killing those beets when he plucks them up out of the ground. It, oh, okay. Most farmers understand that. So he's got that killer instinct. Okay. I think. I'm going to give it to Mr. Bean. I've seen a lot of Mr. Bean. <laughs> that man is that man is a monster. And he didn't get beat up by Michael Scott. No. He did not. I think I think Mr. Bean's got a fair shot. He knows some martial arts. <laughs> he does. He knows how to evade people. That's the how many how many times is he like He outsmarts them from... by accident. He's <laughs> yeah. not really he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. But Bean would find a way. So I'm gonna give it to Mr. Bean. But so again, you Alex, you go Dwight Schrute. I, I go Dwight Schrute, even though I like Bean. Matt says Dwight Schrute. If I have to pick a winner, I still think they the best team up ever. out our stalemate and just feud forever. Or that too, or that. That'd be great. Um, and I think uh, I think Mr. Bean you know, so Peter Griffin chicken kind of way. I don't. Okay, I can see that. I can You're see right. That. So uh, I think that one goes to Dwight Schrute. So maybe he'll come back in a later bracket to fight somebody else. Yeah, maybe we should keep a uh, like tournament, Do a tournament. Sweet sixteen yeah. style. If people like, have any madness. suggestions, <clears throat> hey, if anyone has suggestions, please get a hold of us. Um, you can get me on Twitter. Um, that's probably the best way right now. We don't have an official Twitter or anything. So at this point. It's at Decreft, D-K-R-E-F-F, F as in Frank, T. Um, tweet me and uh, let me know who you think should be in this uh, next future fight. Uh, future fight? That's that game we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, fantasy, fight. fantasy fight. So this fantasy fight goes to Dwight Schrute. Uh, 
Congratulations, Dwight Schrute. You'll have a trophy <laughs> in the mail. Uh, that's awesome. I feel like we should involve Ron Swanson at some point. Swanson. I don't know. I don't yeah. know how you can beat him, but you can't we'll beat find Ron a Swanson, good opponent. Yeah. Maybe Paul Bunyan or something. <laughs> yeah. Patrick Swayze. Dead <laughs> pretty named Stout. <laughs> we'll talk about it for next time. That's great. Okay. Well, uh, trying to think. Is there anything else you guys want to want to really touch on, or is that? I, I think um, I think we've covered a good a good amount for our first show. Cool. We want to thank everybody for taking the time to. If you've if you've lasted this far, wow. Yeah. Good on you. <laughs> thank you. Time. Thank you for being here. Um, we uh, we're having a good time doing this. We want to and try bear and... with us. Hopefully, we'll oh, yeah. get better at this. Um, it's a little weird the first couple of times. I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, I'm sure it will get better if we're allowed to uh, keep doing these. So, and I think we're going to try and do that. So, it, please, if you enjoy this, let us know. Uh, send us some encouragement. Tweet us. Um, do you guys have Twitter or anything or anything I, social I, media? I have Instagram. I brought it up. It. We live. Uh, we live in a pretty we'll small town. I'm, I'm a little behind on that front. Social media, I'm not much on. So, okay. um, so anyway, get a hold of us. Um, like I said, it's at d k r e f f t at uh, on Twitter, and uh, you can let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, if you guys don't have anything else, yeah, um, um, remember, guys, stop being weenies. Learn something manly. Um, no, not even manly. Learn a skill. Learn a skill. All right. Alex, anything else to say? Not really, man. That's it. Uh, ride comes out next month. Try it. And uh, outside of that, just uh, enjoy your weekend. It's coming up quick here. You know. Yeah. This, this, they could be listening, <laughs> just, they could be listening just, to this in a month yeah. from now. But hey, just hey what, it, listener, you know? whatever your next weekend is, please enjoy it. It might be your last. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Have you been to the doctor recently? Yeah. That's super grim. Uh, <laughs> do you have a catchphrase or anything you want to say? Uh, if you... <laughs> <laughs> if you... <laughs> what, what is it? If you hate... If, uh, <laughs> if you hate us, you ain't us. That is off the... Uh, if you hate us, you ain't us? <laughs> ain't us. <laughs> no, <laughs> you clearly misquoted the film. <laughs> I did. I did. And I, the, I, I believe the quote the is, is they hate us because they ain't us. There you go. <laughs> I mean, good God. It's as simple as that. <laughs> if you hate us, you ain't us. Uh, that's oh. a good one, man. A good movie. If you guys haven't checked that out, I hated that movie. Uh, it's it's different. I mean, it's uh, it's not different. It, it's it. terrible. <laughs> Either you love it or you hate it. I hate there's it. No, it's there's no in between. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> Two out of three say it's terrible. Sorry, Seth Rogen. Hey, look, I like Seth Rogen, and I don't really have a problem with. Uh, I like Franco much Franco. better than Seth Rogen. I, I don't have a problem with either one. I just that movie didn't do it for me. Now, there were parts where I laughed. I will admit, but yeah. anyway, we were saying goodbye right now. Yep, yep, yep. We'll we talk about the interview <laughs> next <Adios>. time. <laughs> uh, I don't have a catchphrase yet. Let Talk-cast me know. Talkcast signing off. Talkcast said. Bye.